In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use Flexbox and Elementor Pro to create a beautiful custom header and a beautiful full screen navigation. And of course, it looks beautiful on the mobile too. Hello, I'm your host Casino. I'm the Digital Alchemist. And a lot of you have been asking about my full screen navigation tutorials, but with Flexbox. And now that Flexbox is part of Elementor and more stable, the time has come. So let's take a look at what we're going to build. So here on this beautiful homepage, we have a custom header and it starts with a custom call to action. And then we have our menu. And when I click on it, we have this full gigantic full screen navigation, really modern. So we can close it here. And like I said, it works great on the mobile too. So here is our mobile. We have just an icon here. You can change the icon to whatever you like for the call to action. And then we have our menu and then we have our beautiful navigation. Now, if you'd like to know how to build this beautiful layout for the homepage, or maybe this one, or this one, more about that later in this video. Okay, what do we need to complete this project? So apart from WordPress, you will need Elementor and Elementor Pro. And if you're interested and you don't have Elementor Pro yet, you'll find the handy affiliate link in the description below. Affiliate means that I do get a commission if you purchase through my link, but I only recommend Elementor Pro because I absolutely love it. I use it on all of my websites and I recommend it to my friends and family. Plus it gives a little kickback to the channel and allows me to keep on creating free content just for you. Okay, next you need a WordPress theme and you can use pretty much any theme you want, but I'm using Astra. It's free, it's lightweight, so you might as well install it. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, next in WordPress, you wanna go to Elementor settings. Then you want to click on the experiments tab and you want to scroll down to where it says Flexbox container, make sure it's set to active. And then you want to scroll all the way down and click on save changes. Okay. So if you're using Astra, this is the navigation you're getting. Okay. Next in WordPress, you want to go to templates pop-ups Then you want to click on add new pop-up and I'm going to call mine pop-up full menu. Click on create template. We don't want to use any of that. So let me close this and make sure the navigator is open. In case you're wondering, you can click on the navigator icon at the bottom left of the window. Next, you want to click on the plus sign and we're going to select the first structure. So vertical with one container, and then we'll take care of this later. So next you want to click on the settings icon at the bottom left corner. Now the width should be set to VW 100. Next for the height, you want to select custom, select VH and type 100. And next you want to toggle the overlay off. Next, scroll down to entrance animation and select fade in. And for the exit animation, fade out. And the animation duration should be set to 0, 0,2. Next, you want to click on the responsive icon, go into mobile mode. And for the mobile mode, it's going to be sliding right. And the exit animation is going to be slide out right. Okay, let's go back into desktop mode and let me zoom back out. Next, you want to click on the style tab and then open the close button sub tab. So you want to pick your favorite color, it could be blue, could be whatever, and it's going to appear right here in the top right corner. Now in my case, I'm going to use white and that's just because the background is going to be blue. So I want white on blue. And for the size, I'm going to type 25 pixels. Okay, so that was for our pop-up settings. Now we want to select our main container. So in the navigator, I'm just going to click on the container and then on the layout tab where it says minimum height, I'm going to select VH and type 100. Next for so Flexbox, the direction is going to be vertical. Justify content is going to be center and align items is going to be center for desktop, tablet and mobile. So I can leave it like this. Next, I want to scroll back up, go to the style tab, background type classic, and I'm going to pick my preferred color. And then you want to go to the advanced tab and where it says padding, you want to unlink the values and on the desktop is going to be 0, 060, 0, 060. Then you want to click on the responsive icon, go into tablet mode and link the values. And this time it's 0, 40, 0, 40. And then one more time, this time let's go into mobile mode and link the values. And it's going to be 0, 20, 0, 20. Okay, let me zoom back out and let's go back into desktop mode. So next you want to click on the widgets icon and you want to type nav menu. So I'm just going to drag a nav menu 
in the center. And then for the menu, I got my menu already created within WordPress. So in case you're wondering, in WordPress, you want to go to Appearance Menus. So I already created mine. And if you haven't, just click on Create a New Menu. And then when you're done, click on Save Menu. OK, so back in the editor, I selected my menu. Now for the layouts, I'm going to select drop down, align should be set to center and toggle button should be set to none. Okay, let's scroll back up and let's go into the style tab. Let me zoom back out. Now the text color should be set to whatever color you prefer. In my case, it's going to be white and then click on hover, select a different color. In my case, it's going to be a light blue and the same for active is going to be a light blue. Now let's go back into normal mode and where it says background color, you want to drag the opacity slider all the way to the left to make it completely transparent and repeat the operation for the hover state and for the active state. Okay, let's go back into normal mode and then click on typography. So as you can see, I'm using pop-ins. Now for the size, I'm going to type 100. So it's 100 pixels. So it looks a bit weird right now, but don't worry, we're going to fix it in a moment. So click on the desktop responsive icon, click on tablet. This time it's going to be 80 pixels. And then one more time for the mobile and it's going to be 40 pixels. So let's go back into desktop mode and let me get out of this. OK, where it says vertical padding, you want to type 50. And as you can see, it already looks way better. Now let's click on the responsive icon, go into tablet mode type 40 and then one more time for the mobile and type 20 and as you can see it's looking great now so looks like we are ready so let me click on publish click on add a condition and by default it says include on the entire site click on next next save and close hooray our pop-up is live okay next let's create our header so in wordpress you want to go to templates theme builder then you want to click on header and click on add new OK, we don't want any of this. So first of all, you want to click on the plus sign and we're going to select this structure here with three sub containers. Now, before we move on, I just wanted to tell you that if you had only the menu button, we could use just one container. And then with the magic of Flexbox, we can just use the logo on the left and then the button on the right hand side. But because we're using two buttons and because we're using the sticky feature of Elementor, it seems to be a bug when I was trying, so the only way to do it was to use three subcontainers. OK, so with our navigator open and with our main container selected, you want to go to the layout tab and then where it says content width, you want to change it to full width. And then for flexbox for the direction, you want to make sure you select row horizontal. For justify content, we're going to leave it by default as it is. And for align items, you want to select center. Next, you want to click on the responsive icon, go into tablet mode. So it should still be set to row horizontal for the direction. Justify should be set to end and the line should be set to center. And it's the same for tablet. So you can leave it like this, but just to be sure, let's go into tablet. And as you can see, it takes all the details from the tablet version. OK, so we can go back into desktop mode. Next, where it says gap between elements, you want to make sure you type zero then go into mobile mode and once again type zero. OK, let me zoom back out and let's go back into desktop mode. Next, you want to go to the style tab, background type classic and click on the color and you want to drag the opacity slider all the way to the left so that it's completely transparent. OK, let's get out of here. Then you want to click on the advanced tab and where it says margin, you want to unlink the values and it's going to be zero all around except for the bottom where it's going to be minus 65. Now the trick is to type 65 then type minus in front. So you go way faster than using the arrows. And then you want to click on the responsive icon, go to mobile, unlink the values and this time it's minus 67. OK, let's go back into desktop mode. And now for the padding values, you want to unlink the padding value. It's going to be zero all around, except for the left value, which is going to be 30 on desktop and on the tablet. And then you want to click on the responsive icon, go into mobile, unlink the values. And this time it's zero all around, except for the left value, which is 20. OK, let's go back into desktop mode. Let me zoom back out. Now let's scroll down and where it says Z index, you want to type 999 so that we are sure 
that our header is on top of everything else. Okay, let's zoom back out. Okay, now in the navigator, we want to expand our main container. And as you can see, we get three containers. And let's rename these subcontainer one, subcontainer two, and subcontainer three. Okay, next with our navigator open, we want to select our subcontainer number one. Then you want to click on the layout tab, then where it says width. You want to click on VW and type 68. Then you want to select subcontainer 2 and where it says width, click on VW. And this time it's going to be 20 VW. Click on subcontainer 3 and where it says width, select VW, type 12. And let's zoom back out. And then you want to do the same thing for tablet and mobile. So let's go into tablet mode. Make sure you select subcontainer 1. And then for the width, we're going to type 46 VW. Then click on subcontainer 2 and still with VW selected. This time it's going to be 32. And then subcontainer 3. And this time it's going to be 22 VW. Okay, let's go into mobile mode. Let's select subcontainer 1. The width should be 60 VW. Subcontainer 2, the width should be 20 VW. And the same thing for subcontainer 3, 20 VW. Now, as you can see, it looks like it's not going to fit in and that's because of the padding. So let's go back to subcontainer one and let's reduce it. And when you reach 54, it works. So I wanted to show you that if you just try to add up exactly 60 plus 20 plus 20 it should be 100. But because of the padding, it's not going to work. So you may have to play with those values. So let's go back into tablet mode. Tablet mode seems to be fine and desktop mode is fine. Okay, next, let's click on the widgets icon and then I'm just going to drag an image in the first subcontainer. So I'm going to click here to choose my image and I'm going to pick this one. Next, I want to go to the style tab and where it says width, I'm going to click on pixels and for this specific logo, I'm going to use 170 pixels. Then I want to click on the responsive icon, go into mobile mode and for the mobile it's going to be 70 pixels. Okay, so let's go back into desktop mode. But as you can see, it's here in the center. We want it on the left hand side. So on the content tab, I'm just going to align it on the left. Okay, next, let's click on the widgets icon. And this time I want a button. So I'm just going to drag a button in the subcontainer number two. Okay, so where it says text, I'm just going to change the text just for the sake of this tutorial. I'm going to call it call to action. It should link to wherever you want, could be a page or a pop-up. And then I'm going to use an icon. So click on icon library. I'm going to use Chevron right. Click on insert. I want the icon position to be after and the icon spacing. I'm going to use six. Next, click on the style tab, click on typography. I'm going to hit transform and select uppercase. I'm going to change the size to 14 pixels. And then where it says letter spacing, I'm going to type two. Let me close this. Next for the text color, I'm going to select white. Now for the color, I'm going to use black. Then I click on hover. Text color is still going to be white. And for the background color, I'm going to use this color code. Next for the padding is going to be 20 pixels all around for desktop and tablet. So click on the responsive icon, go to mobile and link the values. And this time it's going to be 20, 20, 20, and then 12. Now, before I forget, let's go back into desktop mode and where it says border radius, I want to type zero so that it's zero all around. And now the corners are square. Okay, great. But now if we go back into mobile mode, so let me click on the responsive icon, mobile, as you can see, it doesn't quite look like what we want. And for that, we need to use a tiny bit of CSS code. And of course, you find the link to the CSS snippet in the description below. OK, so let me zoom back out. And with our button selected, you want to go to the advanced tab. Now, there are a few settings we need to change. But before we do that, let's scroll down to where it says custom CSS. And I'm just going to paste the code snippet. And as you can see now, we only see the icon, but it's a bit too tiny. So with our button selected, you want to go back to the style tab, click on typography and just for the mobile, the size should be set to 25. OK, let's go back into desktop mode. Now let's go back to the advanced tab. And now where it says margin, you want to type zero all around. And that's going to be for desktop, tablet and mobile. And the same for padding, zero all around. Next, where it says width, 
you want to select full width. But as you can see, it's just for the container, so it doesn't look like it's full width now, but we'll fix that in a moment. Next, where it says Z index, you want to type 1001 so that it's above the header, which was 999. And next, you want to open the motion effects sub tab. And where it says sticky, you want to select top. And we're going to leave it for desktop, tablet, and mobile. So that now when we scroll, it's going to be sticky on top. Okay, and last but not least, let's go back to content. And where it says alignment, we want to click on justified. Okay, next, I want to duplicate my button. So I right click, hit duplicate. And I'm just going to drag it in the third sub container. And then with my new duplicate button selected, I want to go to the content tab. I'm going to change the text to menu. And then for the link, this time I'm going to click on the dynamic tags icon, scroll down to where it says pop up, click on the wrench icon, click on where it says all. And then in the search box, I'm going to start typing pop up because I named my pop up pop up full menu. Click on it. OK, so now it's linked. Now for the icon, I'm going to click on the icon library. And the one I'm going to use is called grip. So grip lines. I also want it to be after. Next, you want to click on style. And for the color, I'm going to use a different color and then click on hover. And for the background color, I'm going to use a different color. Looking good. Okay, next, you want to click on sub container one. Then you want to go to advanced and where it says padding, you're going to type zero so that it's zero all around. And you want to do the same thing for sub container two, advanced zero and sub container three advanced and zero. And as you can see, it's now looking much, much better. Now let's go into tablet mode, looking good. And now let's go into mobile mode, almost looking good because the logo is way too tiny. So let's select our logo. Let's go to style. So that was my mistake. I told you to put 70 pixels. And actually, in my case, it's 70%. So that looks much better. Now, of course, your logo is going to be different. So you're going to have to play with these values. OK, it seems like we are ready. So let's zoom back out. And now let's hit publish. So it's going to ask, where do you want to display your template? Add a condition. I want to use it on the entire website. Hit save and close. OK, so let's take a look. Let's refresh our page. And as you can see, it's working beautifully. So let me click on menu and there you go. We got a beautiful navigation and I can close it and let's check the mobile mode. So when I hit the menu, as you can see, it's sliding in from the right hand side and it's looking beautiful. So congrats. We went from this stock navigation to this navigation with a custom call to action and the menu and the same here on the mobile. Now, like I told you at the beginning of this video, if you want to know how to build this layout or maybe this one or this one, well, lucky you, I've put a handy link in the description below because I created this tutorial just before this one. So now you can really fully build a beautiful homepage with a custom header and full screen navigation. All of that with the power of Flexbox and Elementor Pro. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial and the hard work that went into it, please give this video a thumbs up because it's really going to help the channel. And if you want more web design goodness coming your way, make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Now, if there are any topics that you'd like me to cover on the channel, make sure you let me know in the comments below because I'm curious. And don't forget, I'm trying to build the content I wish I had when I got started. So I'll see you in the next one. And until then, Take care and stay safe.